Michigan, this is Barack Obama. I want to talk with you about the Alyssa Slotkin I know. Alyssa is the kind of leader we need. Tough, independent, and effective. She'll get the job done. Former President Barack Obama in the home stretch of the election season, throwing his weight behind a handful of Senate races, including in the battleground state of Michigan. Democratic control of the Senate in the next Congress hangs by a thread. Republicans only have to flip two of the currently Democratic held seats to gain the majority in the Senate, and they basically already have one in their column, the seat being vacated by West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. Now, Republicans are trying to flip seats in Montana, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Maryland. And Democrats are fighting to keep what they have while eyeing a few Republican seats in Florida and Texas. Joining me now is Democratic strategist Adam Gentleson, former chief of staff for Senator John Fetterman and former deputy chief of staff to the late Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Adam, thank you for being here tonight. I've wanted to talk about the Senate for so long, we won't have nearly enough time to get to all of it. But first, let's start in Ohio. Bernie Moreno is running against Sherrod Brown. Sherrod Brown, I think, is running for his fourth term. Bernie Moreno said two weeks ago that abortion shouldn't be an issue for women over the age of 50 and also has been pushing the lie about Haitian migrants eating pets. How is this still a toss up race? It's a toss-up race because Ohio has gotten a lot redder uh, over the last few election cycles. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago that Ohio was a purple state. Barack Obama won it in both 2008 and 2012. Um, so, but, you know, over the 10 years since then, I hate to think it's been over 10 years since uh, Obama's second term, but here we are. Um it's gotten a lot redder, and that's why it's a toss-up. Sherrod Brown is an incredible senator. He's an incredible fighter for working people in Ohio and across the country. And the reason this race is competitive, the reason he's ahead right now, uh, is that he's such a strong fighter, but he's fighting against very strong forces pulling to the right in that state. And I just want to say one thing about that Bernie Moreno quote that you mentioned on abortion, especially uh, that abortion quote was so amazing because he wasn't this wasn't a tracker video. This wasn't someone pressing the question to him. When Moreno said that thing about abortion, he went out of his way to say it. He said, you know, he was answering a different question. And he said, and another thing, let me tell you about abortion and then gave that completely insane answer. So that just shows what an extremist he is how out of the mainstream his views on abortion are. But as you said, this race is close and it's going to be close all the way down to the wire because of the fundamental forces pulling to the right in the state of Ohio. Yeah, when you talk about those kind of big seismic forces reorienting American political life in the 21st century, in the year 2024, I wonder how you think that plays out in Michigan and Wisconsin. In Michigan, you have Alyssa Slotkin, who Barack Obama did that ad for. She hasn't. She had an eight-point lead in August, which is now down to a four-point spread. In large part, that's due to independent voters who seem to be, in the words of the Cook Political Report, coming home for her Republican opponent, Mike Rogers. In Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin is leading uh, Eric Hovde by, I think it's two points, but that's, again, down from a seven-point spread uh, earlier this summer. Again, that looks like it's independence moving towards the Republican. You know, what do you attribute the, those those independent votes going to the right side of the aisle? Like, what are the forces there? Is that just pol ultimate sort of polarization? Nobody's really an independent anymore. Do you think that's a change in ticket? How do you look at that? Independents still exist and undecided voters still exist. Um, the fact that they don't exist is sort of a myth of our culture right now. Um, you know, the idea of polarization can be taken too far sometimes. But they are a much smaller group. That much is is definitely true. And so in any of these swing states that are hotly contested, you know, a seven point win by either candidate is not really in the cards anymore in our era of polarization because that pool of undecided voters is so much smaller. So it doesn't cause me any major panic, having been through a fair number of these tight races in purple states myself, to see a seven point lead go down to four or even three points this late in the game. We are, after all, only a month from Election Day, as shocking as it is to say that. Um, but, you know, that pool of small undecided voters is going to break, you know, two thirds in one direction or three quarters in one direction. And I think that's what you're seeing here is that those leads are shrinking, but they're 
being maintained by the Democrats. And so some undecided voters are coming home to Republicans, but enough of them are coming home to the Democrats that they're still able to hang on to these statistically significant leads that I think ultimately will be um, what brings them to victory. It'll be so, tight, but they'll make it. So that might be a ceiling in terms of independent movement rather than a suggestion that it's going to continue to sway, swing in Republican directions as the, as the days tick on. I, I got to ask you about Texas because... I think there are probably a lot of people in the world that would like to see Ted Cruz take his nameplate off the door, door in the Senate. It has been sort of the kicking Cruz out of the upper chamber has been something Democrats have wanted for years now. Colin Allred, the Democrat running in that Senate race, is only running four points behind Ted Cruz. And the Cook Political Report moved that race from likely Republican to leaning Republican. How much hope should Democrats pin on that race? I think Texas is always worth taking a serious look at in terms of investment. And I think Democrats are right to invest in it because it is such a massive prize and the margin is relatively small. And because Colin Allred is a very talented, very strong candidate. Uh, and Ted Cruz is a weak opponent. So it's worth it because it is such a prize in terms of electoral votes. It's such a prize in terms of culture and what it would mean for the Democratic Party to be able to claim both California, Texas, and New York as the three most populous states in their column. Um, so, you know, Democrats have some money to spend right now. I think they are smart to spend it in Texas. Colin Allred is running a very strong campaign. Ted Cruz is an incredibly weak opponent. His popularity numbers are in the toilet, rightfully so. He's done nothing but preen and advocate for extreme causes since he's been in the Senate. He's done nothing to serve the people of Texas. Uh, this is a good race. This is a race worth investing in. And who knows, we may see a surprise on Election Day. Preen is one word for it, Adam. I could think of another to describe the things Ted Cruz has been doing in the Senate, but it's a family program.